So in this recitation, we're going to look at step and delta functions, integration, and generalized derivatives. So the first part, you're asked to compute the integrals from 0 minus to infinity, delta t exponential t squared dt. The second one is from 0, 0 minus to infinity, delta t minus 2, exponential of t squared sine t cos 2t. The third one is 0 plus to infinity, delta t exponential of t squared dt. So note that it's the, first, it's the same as a, except that the bounds of integration changed. The second part, we're asked to find the generalized derivatives of these two functions, where u here is just a step function that you saw before. And uh, yeah, so it's 3u t minus 2u t minus 1. And the second one is t squared for t negative and exponential minus t for t positive. So why don't you pause the video and work through this example, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. So let's compute the first one. 0 minus infinity delta t exponential t squared dt. So just to remind you, the delta function is everywhere 0 except at the value 0. And we represent it with an arrow. And the integral of the delta would be 1 from minus infinity to plus infinity. In this, in this integral, we're integrating from 0 minus to infinity, which means that the 0 is included in our interval from 0 minus to infinity. Therefore, this integral is basically assigning the value to this function exponential t squared. And the value that it's assigning to it is the value it would take at t equals to 0, where the delta is non-zero. And so really clearly, this is just exponential of 0. And it's give us 1. For the second one integral, it goes from 0 minus to infinity, delta t minus 2, exponential, a more complicated function, t squared sine t cos 2t. So now let's represent this delta function here. So this is just our 0 axis. And the delta here is 0 everywhere except at 2, where we would represent it again with an arrow and amplitude 1. Okay? So this delta is 0 everywhere except at 2, where it would assign the value to the function next to it at the value t equals to 2. So really, this integration gives us just the value of this function at t equal 2. So 4 sine 2 cos 4. And here, the key was that, again, this interval of integration from 0 minus to infinity and clearly includes the value at which delta function is non-zero. So for the last one, we return to our first integral, except that now we're changing the bounds of integration to 0 plus to infinity. So now, if I do representation, of the delta function that we are dealing with, so delta centered at 1, and the interval of integration, we have an open interval now that does not include the value at which delta is non equal to 0. So everywhere, this function would just be assigned the, the, its value at, it would just be multiplied by the function that is 0. And so basically, it's like multiplying this function by 0, and it just gives us 0. It's like the delta fell off of our interval of integration, so we're just left with a zero function. So let's move to the second part. The second part asks us to find a generalized derivative to f of t equals 3ut minus 2ut minus 1. So just to remind you here, of what the u of t's are. Just want to sketch a few things. So first, u of t is just the step function that would be 0 everywhere and would take the value 1 for t larger than 0. So this first part here would just be non-zero for t larger than 0. Instead of being assigned value 1, it's just be assigned value 3, because we're multiplying the u of t by 3. So this first part would look like this. The second part here would be u shifted to t, t by, by minus 1, which means that u 
a zero everywhere for t less than one. So we would have a zero function here. So let me just do dots. But it should be on the same axis. And one for t larger than one. But here we're giving it, a, a multiplying it by factor minus two. So really what we have is another u function that is shifted down to minus two. So the sum of these two contributions is zero for t negative, takes the value three for t between zero and one, and the value one, three minus two, for t larger than one, okay? So clearly here we have discontinuities at t equals to zero and t equals to one. So let's just write down the derivative. The generalized derivative here would lead us first to compute the derivatives when, where the function is continuous. So for minus infinity to zero, it's a constant, so derivative would be zero. Between zero and one, it's constant, derivative would be zero. And from one to infinity, it would also give us zero. So we would have a zero contribution from the, the continuous part of the function, if you wish. But we still need to account for the discontinuities. So at zero, we have a jump from zero to three. And that, we learned, can be written down as a delta function of magnitude three centered at zero. After that, we have another jump. Now it's from three to one. So it's a jump of minus two amplitude centered at one. So here, we can also do that with del the delta, but we just need also to shift it by minus one to, to show clearly that the jump occurs at one and multiply this by minus two to show the amplitude of the jump down. Okay, so if we were now to represent it f prime, basically the regular part zero, so there's nothing to, to write down except just a zero function, and the discontinuities that I'm just gonna represent on the graph would be the delta function centered at zero of magnitude three, and delta function centered around one of magnitude minus two. And the rest would just be the zero function. So that would be f prime. That's f of t. So for the second one that we were given, it's a function f of t that takes the value t squared for t negative and exponential minus t for t positive. So quick sketch here tells that this function looks like this, an exponential minus t for t positive, okay? Taking a value here, one. So clearly there is a jump here, discontinuity. So how do we go about computing this generalized derivative? So let's look again at the continuous parts. So from minus infinity to zero, we're dealing with just a t square. So the derivative is just two t. For t between zero and infinity, we're just dealing with exponential minus t. So that's minus exponential minus t. But we need to account for the discontinuity, the jump of amplitude one at zero. So as we saw before, this can just be modeled with a delta function. And if we were to represent this function, then we would just need to add a delta function of magnitude one here, and then just sketch 2t, so for example, and then minus, my exponential minus 2t, that would give us something like that. And that ends the problem for today. And the key points here were just to learn how to manipulate the, the step function and how to use the delta function when you compute your integrals and be careful with the bounds of integration.